We're going to do some review in this video on using a derivative and second derivative to analyze a function. The first thing we need to remember is that a derivative tells us the slope. So, I have a graph of f prime right here. When f prime is positive, that means f has a positive slope, which means f is increasing. When f prime is zero, that means that the slope of f is zero, meaning it has a maximum or minimum or just a horizontal tangent. When f prime is negative, the slope of f is negative and is therefore decreasing. When f prime changes, changes from uh, neg positive to negative, that means f changed from increasing to decreasing meaning this represents a maximum in f. When f prime changes from negative to positive, that means that f changed from decreasing to increasing, meaning this spot would represent a minimum in f. So let's answer these questions just like you did in a, b. Where is f of x increasing? Well, I always like to just think about the justification first. f is increasing when f prime of x is greater than zero. So we're going apparently from negative infinity to negative three, from zero to two, and from two to infinity. Notice that at two it is not uh, increasing because f prime is zero at that spot. Next, where does f have a local minimum? Well, here we're looking for where f prime changes from negative to positive. Remember, we know that because then f would have changed from decreasing to increasing. So that occurs at x equals 0. Finally, if f is defined on the interval from negative 3 to 3, where is the absolute maximum? Remember, when we talk absolute maximums, usually we have to uh, check endpoints Well, and use the original function. I didn't give you the original function. So let's just talk it through. We start at negative 3, and we've got a positive derivative. So the function just keeps increasing. So if I were to sketch it, it would increase something like that. Then, we hit a maximum, and it decreases for a little bit. It doesn't decrease a lot, though. Remember, the area tells us how much it decreased. So it decreases until zero, not a lot. Then it begins to increase, again, because we've got a, a positive derivative, and it increases to two, and then levels, and then increases some more. So it's going to increase all the way to 2, level out for a second, and increase again. So judging by this picture, I think we can say that the absolute minimum occurs at the right endpoint, x equals 3. Inflection points. Well, inflection points occur when the second derivative changes signs. Remember, it's not enough to say it's where it is zero. We have to say it changes signs. Well, in, in an effort to not uh, graph the second derivative, which we could certainly do, you know, we could graph that, I'm going to just try and define it with f prime. If f double prime changed signs, that means that f prime changed directions. Okay. So where does f prime change directions? Well, right around here at negative 1, right up here at positive 1, right here at 2. I'm kind of rounding a little bit. It might be, you know, 0.9. It might be negative 1.1 or something. But I'm going to kind of, kind of round that. So we have inflection points at negative 1, positive 1, and 2. Anytime f prime changed directions, that means f double prime would have changed signs. 
Well, where is it concave down? Again, we could use the second derivative. That's where f double prime is less than 0. But we also could use the first derivative. If f double prime is less than 0, f prime is decreasing. So we can just kind of look for those spots where f prime is decreasing. So in here and in here. Okay. So from negative 3 or negative infinity, I guess, to negative 1 and from 1 to 2. And again, the College Board usually says if we give you the derivative, we'd rather you use that as your, um, we'd rather use the one that we give you to justify. Now finally, how would you use this or do this if you had to use the function? Well, uh, and I did provide a picture, but I want to do this all with just the derivative. So first, the critical points, remember that's where f prime equals 0 or is undefined. Okay. So in our case, f prime of x is 12x squared minus 5. So if I set that equal to 0, add 5 to both sides, divide by 12, and square root, I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 5 twelfths. And that will correspond with these, this maximum and this minimum. Okay. Now to do a little sign analysis on this to know where it's increasing or decreasing, let me just put these on the number line so we have negative square root of 5 twelfths. We have positive square root of 5 twelfths. And we're going to do sign analysis on the derivative. So let me start by plugging in something really negative. Okay, so something down here. Well, 12 times the number squared. A number squared is always positive. So 12 times something negative squared is positive. And bigger than, uh, bigger than 5, subtract 5, we get a positive. Next, if we plug in 0, you know, something between these two, 12 times 0 squared minus 5 is negative. Finally, we plug in something big, maybe like 2. Okay, 12 times that squared minus 5 is positive. F is increasing where F prime is positive, so from negative infinity to negative square root of 5 twelfths, and from square root of 5 twelfths to infinity. And you can certainly see that on the graph, that it's increasing from negative infinity to that point and from that point to positive infinity. Now, concave up, we're looking for where the second derivative is greater than 0. Well, the second derivative would be 24x. So the only point of interest there, if we set this equal to 0, would be 0. So let me put that on the number line. We're going to do a little sign analysis of our second derivative. If I plug in a negative number, 24 times a negative is negative. If I plug in a positive number, 24 times that number is positive. So we are concave up from 0 to infinity. And you can certainly see that in the picture. The concave up, remember, means kind of a bowl opening up. It's definitely opening up from 0 to infinity and opening down from negative infinity to 0. Now, one last thing. Uh, inflection points. Remember, you cannot classify an inflection point as x equals 0 until you know there's a sign change. It's only an inflection point if f double prime changes signs. Finally, the local extrema. Well, I want to just do this. Uh, I want to use the second derivative test. And 
I want you to just think about this with concavity. If I tell you that there's an extrema, and there is right here, this is the original graph. If I tell you there's an extrema there, but I want to, and I want to know if it's a maximum or minimum. If I know the function is concave down at the extrema, it has to be a maximum, right? And if I tell you that at the other extrema it's concave up, it has to be a minimum. So if I use the second derivative to classify the extrema, remember they occur at critical points, so I'm going to plug in square root of 5 twelfths to f double prime. So I'll get 24 multiplied by the square root of 5 twelfths, obviously positive. So what I've just shown here is that there's an extrema at square root of 5 twelfths, and the second derivative is positive. So at the extrema, we're concave up. This is a minimum. The other one, f double prime of negative square root of 5 twelfths. So now we do 24 multiplied by negative square root of 5 twelfths, and that is less than 0, which means we're concave down. So now I tell you there's an extrema at negative 5 twelfths, and we're concave down. That must mean this one is a maximum. And that is the second derivative test, and that's how we can classify using that.